Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to this video training, The Magic of Success. I am Jocelyn Mercado, and I am a transformational life and business coach, and I am just so excited to share this information with you today. So we are broadcasting on Zoom as well as on Facebook Live, and I would love to have you go ahead and type in the chat or in the comments on Facebook your name and where you are calling in from so I can see where everyone's joining us from today. All right, welcome Inga from the Netherlands. Welcome Mark from Lancaster, UK. Welcome Gloria. Welcome Anne. Hi, Anne. Good to see you here. Welcome, Maggie. Hi, how are you, Maggie? Welcome, Elle from State College, PA. Awesome. All right, and we have some people over on Facebook as well, so wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So today, I am going to share this with you quickly here. Um, we are going to be talking about the magic of success. And as I said in the intro email that announced this event, there uh, we've been trained in our society to kind of settle for mediocrity. We've been trained to settle for setting goals and hoping for the best. And what we, we really have so much more power um, to shape and change our lives than we could possibly even realize or understand. And so today we're gonna to talk about four ways to set yourself up to receive abundant success and miracles. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm gonna to share some key ideas from my own experience and extensive research that I have done as well as my work with clients um, about what we're really capable of creating and what are the drivers of transformational success, not just um, you know, moving up steadily and kind of expecting what everybody else expects from life, but really going above and beyond and really um, stepping fully into your purpose so that you can do your highest work in the world. So it, it's all tied in together, right? It's all tied in with that. And as we begin here, I just want to invite you to be fully present, to close the tab on your browser that might have your email that you haven't read yet, and to put your phone on silent. Um, if you're in an office, to close the door and just, you know, really, really settle in and enjoy because you're going to get so much more out of this if you are fully present here with me. And welcome, welcome again, all those who are just joining now. So let's dive right in to the information, the four ways to set yourself up to receive abundant success and miracles. So step number one is to do the work to deeply understand your life's purpose. So we each hold the key to something that the world critically needs. And I believe that it is our sacred responsibility to find out what our purpose is and then to go and do it. So my advice to you is don't wait another day. Find out what your life's purpose is, or if you know what it is, then um, walk that path and really move toward it. And I have some information here that will help you on the journey if you don't yet know. But what's important is that when you are on the path toward your true life's purpose, miracles and synchronicities will guide you at every step. This is simply the way the world works. So when we are pointing toward our purpose and when we are taking steps to really make that happen, we're going to be fully guided and supported by the universe. So if you know already what your life's purpose is, you are already in a fantastic position to take action on it, which we'll talk about very soon here in the following steps. And if you don't yet know, I wanna give you some journaling exercises that are really going to help you and that are really like kind of play, okay? Kind of a playful exercise, which are designed to help open you up to discovering your higher purpose. So there's one thing that I can guarantee you about this. If you don't already know, what your higher, higher purpose is or what your soul's mission is in this lifetime, it's already staring you right in the face. 
it's already somewhere very, very present in your life, whether it's in your day-to-day -day situation, whether it is in um, an event that happened in your life that really changed things for you, it's right there. It's right there. So the first thing that you can do in wanting to discover your purpose is to really open up to just perceiving it, right? Just just being open to kind of in a line of, of inquiry and in curiosity about, okay, what, what is my purpose? I'm very, very open to understanding it. So really let that sink in, that it, it's already there. It's already very, very present in your life. And, and here are some ways that you can go deeper in really figuring that out. Now, somebody has said in the chat on Zoom that the voice sync is out, is I guess is off. Um, is anybody else having that experience? Is anybody else having trouble hearing or that my voice is disconnected from how I'm moving? <laughs> really, okay. Let's see, one of the person said yes and two people said no. Okay. Okay. If most, so it looks like most people are hearing. Okay. If you're having that, you may want to leave the meeting and then, okay. Yeah. You may want to leave the meeting and come back in. Sometimes with zoom, it can just be a problem with the connection. And then, so if you leave and come back in, then hopefully you'll get a better connection that second time. Um, but since most people are not having a problem, then I'm going to go ahead without changing things on my side. Okay. So in your journal or notebook, and if you don't have a journal or notebook with you right now, go run and get one or go get it, run and get a piece of paper. And I'm going to give you five questions to write down. And for now, just write them down. You'll work on exploring the answers later when you have more time, but I'm going to give you the questions now, and then I'll tell you what to do with them when you have a little bit of time later on today. Okay. And also, even if you already know your soul's purpose, if you already know your life's mission, it can be really fun to journal on, the, on these questions anyway and go even deeper into that or maybe illuminate a new way to expand into that purpose that you may not have realized before. So these are some really fun questions. Okay. So write down these five questions now, and then I'll tell you what to do with them later. And you may have some ideas that pop up now. So I'll give a little bit of time here um, on the call too. So if you have anything that comes right up for you, just jot it down. So question one is, has two parts. What did I most love doing as a child? So what did you most love doing as a child? And what were you most known for when you were a child? I'll give you a minute to write that and jot down any immediate insights that come up. Okay, question number two is, what is the one thing I have always longed to do, but never quite allowed myself to pursue it? Often this will be a creative pursuit of some sort, but it might be something different too. Okay, I'll read that again. What is the one thing I have always longed to do but never allowed myself to pursue it? Question number three is, if you could take a class to learn more about anything in the world, what would that class be about? What are you very curious about? What do you want to know more about? Okay. And question number four is to write down between one and three major life experiences you've had that completely changed the course of events in your life. So some people may only have one of these. Usually we, we all have at least one. Um, but some people may only have one that was like really big. Some people may have three, four, five, or more, you know, depending on what's been going on in your life. So I would say write down between one and three that were the biggest life experiences, life changes that really shifted the course of events for you. And again, right now you're just writing down the questions and maybe a couple little notes, but don't you don't have to write the answers yet. Okay, so then question number five is, what did I learn 
from each of these experiences. And that'll take you a little more time. So you have the five questions now. So when you are ready and have some time, I would put aside at least 45 minutes to work on this, okay, to really give yourself ample time. So when you have that time available, hopefully later today while it's still fresh in your mind or maybe tomorrow, I recommend that you write down each question at the top of one page in your journal or notebook. Now, if you like to write a lot, maybe leave yourself two whole pages for every question, okay? Whatever you like, but at least one whole page for each question. So write a question at the top of one page and leave the rest blank and so on. And then do a guided meditation. So if there is a, you know, a, a meditation that you like to listen to, um, or if you just like to sit quietly and focus on your breathing, however you prefer to get into kind of a, a deeper meditative state, and do this for at least three to five minutes before beginning to answer the questions. And then when you're ready, once you've done your meditation, open your journal and read the first question and just allow yourself to begin writing. And write until you have filled up the whole page. Don't worry about whether it makes sense. Don't worry about whether it's in logical order. Just write whatever comes to mind. Really let it be like a stream of consciousness emerging from you. Um, free writing like this is very powerful in helping you to access your subconscious thoughts, your subconscious mind, and to really get in touch with ideas and information that may not be readily available to your thinking logical mind. And once you've filled up that page or the two pages that you reserved for that first question, then just move right on to the next question. Try to stay in this deep kind of meditative state. Let it be really a stream of consciousness and fill up each page with the writing to the answers to the question. And then once you've answered all five questions, then put your journal away for 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so one or two full days. And after that time has gone by, come back and read through your answers and have a highlighter handy. Okay, so when you come back to these, you want to use a highlighter to highlight anything important or anything that really stands out to you. Especially highlight anything that you wrote that was kind of surprising to you or, or a little bit unexpected. And once you've done the highlighting, spend a little bit of time, maybe five or 10 minutes, just again, kind of meditating and reflecting on what you've learned and whether any common themes came up for more than one question. See if there's some commonality across the answers to these different questions. And if something did come up multiple times, really pay attention to that. And then finally, after you've read over the answers and done your highlighting, ask for a dream. Ask for a dream. So as you're going to sleep the night after you do the highlighting part, ask for a dream to inform you, to give you more information about what your life's purpose is and really trust that you will receive this information very soon. Okay, so have fun with that. Enjoy that exercise. All right, so step number two, and let me look at the comments here. Yeah, so somebody's asking if I can email the questions. Yeah, so if you are registered for the three, uh, the series of three videos, that this is the first one, um, then yes, when I email you out the recording, I will include the questions and that little process in the email. And let me just do this um, in case anybody is listening who is not already registered for the three video series. Um, I am going to put a link here in the chat. So that you can register for all of those videos. And let me just go over to Facebook and do the same in the chat over there. Sorry about the delay here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Great. All right. So let's move on to step two. So step number two to welcoming success and miracles into your life is a really big one. And this is to step outside of your comfort zone. So we are programmed 
by our modern culture, by our whole educational system, everything out there, right? To recreate the familiar again and again, because it's safe and predictable. And we're also programmed for this biologically, right? This was, so when we were, um, you know, hunters and gatherers, and when we, we were living very, very close to nature, we needed to um, protect ourselves and stay safe and stay in the community and, you know, keep things familiar and feeling safe. And so it can be very, very hard to get outside of our comfort zone because we have to confront then all of the conditioning from our society that tells us, look, you got to do things this way. You got to get this kind of job. You have to, you know, make this kind of money, yada, 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 right? As well as our biological um, impulses to keep things safe and familiar and secure, right? So going outside of our comfort zone can be really, really hard on all those levels, and it takes tremendous courage to do so. All right, so I know that all of you listening in different ways in your life have dared to go outside of your comfort zone at different times, and I want to really just honor you for that because it's big whenever we do this. But when it comes to our life's purpose, when it comes to our soul's work, it is pretty much always, I think it's safe to say 100% of the time, going to require us to step outside of our comfort zone. So whether that means doing something that is very different from what our friends and family might typically approve of, whether that means, um, you know, like really speaking up and speaking your voice about something, whether it means going back to school again when you're, you know, to get a new degree on a new specialization, whatever that might look like, whenever we do get outside of our comfort zone, we have the opportunity to create an entirely new experience for ourselves. So when we, when we leave our comfort zone, when we do something that, is, that, that doesn't feel safe and that feels a little bit scary for us, we then put ourselves in a situation to succeed in doing that, right? And then we enable our subconscious mind to see that something very different is possible and even safe and survivable, all right? Even preferable. So that is what we really want to strive for. Okay, we don't want to, we, if you're on this call, you probably are looking to change your life in some kind of a big way. And so we're not going to get to a new place by doing the same old things again and again. I'm sure you already know that. But in order to get out of doing the same old things, we've got to get outside of that comfort zone. So I encourage you to give it a try. And of course, I'm going to give you more tips and information on this. So, but really and truly what I want you to know above, above everything else is that there is no better way to create a huge shift in your life, aka a miracle, than taking a big courageous step outside of your comfort zone. Because that outside of your comfort zone is the place where tremendous growth and transformation can occur. And it does take great courage and it does take trust. Right, and it takes us just at some times just holding on tight and enjoying the ride. <laughs> um, but if you wanna change your life, if you wanna start something new, if you wanna release old patterns, release old doubts and fears, whatever it is that you really most deeply want, the answer is almost always to do something outside of your comfort zone. So the reason for this, and let's go a little bit deeper into all of this, the reason is that when we want to live differently, when we want to have a different experience of life than we've had in the past, we need to create the experience of that different way. We need to take one step at a time toward our new life. So think about your life's purpose. Think about the, the thing you know in your heart that you want to do or create or become in this lifetime. The thing that emerges when you ask those questions that we were just talking about earlier. And then think about one thing that you could do that would both A, get you closer to working on or accomplishing your life's purpose, and B, that would be a little bit scary or uncomfortable or outside of your comfort zone. So maybe it's speaking your truth to a friend or a family member about something you really believe in. And you don't know, you know, you don't know how they will receive it, right? Maybe it's switching to a vegetarian diet that's more aligned with your spiritual beliefs. Maybe it's about starting a local community group or a women's circle or a men's circle in your, in your local area. Maybe it's about starting your own business. 
Um, of course, there are infinite possibilities. These are just a few examples, and, and it will be quite unique for each person listening. But really take some time today, or if you want to do the questions I gave you first, then take some time with those questions, and then take some time with this, to really sense into your heart and decide on something that you can do outside of your comfort zone that will get you closer to truly living the life that you really, really want, the life that you deeply desire, the life where you can do something that you love every day. This step, this stepping outside of your comfort zone is absolutely guaranteed to open you up to miracles because when we have the courage to do something that is scary or uncomfortable, something that we might otherwise not have dared to do, it really creates the possibility for us to have an entirely new experience of life. And when we do that, when we give ourselves that new experience, that new perception of what is really possible for us, it starts to put cracks in the old walls that we've built within ourselves. You know, we build walls around our heart, we build walls to push our feelings down. And when we step outside of our comfort zone, it starts to break down those old walls that have kept us stuck. And it starts to break down the restrictions that our subconscious mind works so hard to keep intact. Our subconscious, it's really trying to help us. It's trying to keep us in what feels safe and familiar so we don't get hurt. But those limitations that we place upon ourselves can quickly become a prison. Right? And when we dare to do something outside of that, when, then and we find out that it is safe and we find out that we can succeed at it and actually it's really good and fun, then we start breaking down those prison bars and really letting the sunlight of possibility and new opportunity shine in on all those places inside of us. And that is exactly when synchronicities and magic and miracles start to happen. So this step two is really, really big. So definitely spend some time with that, thinking about what, what can you do. So step number three is to take action. And this one is really important. So this is where we see the beautiful dance of the masculine and the feminine in our lives. So those first two steps were really allowing the more feminine parts of ourselves to take the lead receiving the intuitive guidance and insights about what our life purpose is, right? That's very feminine, like receiving, receiving the vision, receiving the, the information, the insights, and, and then getting inspired, receiving the inspiration, and also getting the, the courage to, about what we could do that's outside of our comfort zone. Okay, all of that is like letting the vision come in, letting the ideas come in, very feminine. Now, step three is moving into a more masculine, um, using the masculine aspects of ourselves, And this is taking decisive action. So now we've received the dreams, we've opened up to the vision, we've set our intentions to get outside of our comfort zone, and now we're going to take a really concrete and logical action to bring it all into physical reality. And this is where the interplay of both are so necessary. So you can't take aligned action unless you first received the, the vision and the insights, okay? But you can't just stop with the vision and the insights. You've got to move on to taking action. And that's where I'm saying that we need both the masculine and the feminine in interplay in order to create what we want in our lives. So we've got to take action because we need to create a channel for the abundance to flow into our lives. We can't only set intentions and receive visions and then sit back and wait for the miracles to happen. The intentions and the getting clarity are critically important, but they've got to be followed by action. So the universe is constantly conspiring to send us huge amounts of abundance. But our blocks and our low expectations and our not taking decisive action can get in the way of us actually receiving that abundance. When we do take action, we counteract those low expectations that we might have had in the past. And this is by creating an open pathway for the universe to send us what we've really been dreaming of, what we've really been wanting. So it's a two-part deal here. First, the universe creates opportunities, and then we need to take action on those opportunities 
and really claim them and, and, and allow the abundance to come into us. So whether the abundance is in the form of, you know, a new person that you might meet and you get into conversation with them and it turns out that they have, um, that there's a new job opportunity through them to get away from a job you don't like into a job that you will love. Or it might be taking action in a way of, as I said earlier, changing your diet and switching to a vegetarian diet because maybe that's more healthy for your whole system. Whatever it might be, the taking action is absolutely critical to allow the new abundance and the new way of living to really flow in. And when you are consistently taking decisive and inspired action, you can expect miracles and new opportunities to really begin arriving at your front doorstep in beautiful ways. So when you take an action, when you gather your courage, when you remember that you are here to be a warrior in service to life and light and love and to create creativity and creating something new, then you're really opening up the channels for God, goddess, great mystery, the higher power of the universe to send you exactly what you want and need the most. So my question to you then, knowing all of this, is what is the action that you are going to take? Write it down. And let me just make a suggestion here that the action you're going to take, what I most highly recommend for you, is that you take action on what it was that you identified that would get you outside of your comfort zone and closer to living the life you really want. So what is that action? It might feel a little scary, and that's good. That's not just okay, that's good. What is the action that you're going to take? Write it down, write it down now, and write down the date by which you are going to complete it. And so again, these actions will be very, very unique to each of you as individuals. Some people may have an action that they can do today or that they can do first thing tomorrow morning, and that's great. Other actions might take more planning, like if you want to start a community group or a women's circle or a men's circle in your local area, you might need to do a lot of planning, and that might involve um, the first step of just reaching out to a local holistic health center, for example. That might be your action, um, but the total process is going to be multiple steps that will take a couple months, and that's fine too. That's wonderful. So either way is fine, whether it's like one quick action or a more extended time frame for your, for your larger action. But you must write it down today. You must put that date on it by which you want to complete it and post it somewhere that you will see it every day, somewhere in your home or your office, and then take clear and decisive action on it. Now notice, I didn't say perfect action. It doesn't have to be perfect. And getting caught up in wanting things to be perfect is a place where we can get really stalled or we can get really stuck. And we start thinking that if we can't execute it per perfectly, then it's not good enough. And that's just not true. So imperfect action is what we want here, actually. Imperfect action is amazing. So first of all, if we're taking imperfect action, it means we are taking action, and that is absolutely the most important part. But also, in many cases, the imperfections of how you choose to take action when you're just starting out in something new are exactly where the magic comes in. The imperfection might actually open up new and different opportunities that you expected. The new and different opportunities than you expected, I should say. And when that happens, it's truly universal magic guiding you on your path, or sometimes even helping you to leap forward in big ways. So write down your action, write down the date you want to complete it, and have fun with it, have fun carrying it out. Um, this really is the beginning of a totally new opportunity and new possibilities in your life. So enjoy it, even when it gets a little scary. And, and trust me that when you're living more and more kind of on the, on the edge, on your edge, right, on the edge of your comfort zone, you'll learn to enjoy the, the feeling of, you know, stepping into something new, doing something a little scary more and more often, and you'll feel how it is just pulling you forward in really big ways. 
in all different aspects of your life. Because living at your edge, at the edge of your comfort zone, is truly the place of the greatest creativity, opportunity, and fulfillment for you. So have fun with that. It's supposed to be fun. Okay. So step number four is to know deeply that whatever it is that you most desire, whatever it is that you have a longing for, if you, if you know you need to change your life, if you know you need to get out of an old relationship, if you know you need to change your career, whatever that is that you feel so strongly that you just can't deny it, you can't not feel it, know that that feeling is there for a reason, okay? And there is a way for you to accomplish that. Whatever, that. whatever that change is that you so deeply need in your life, there is a way for you to do it. We are surrounded by amazing solutions to our problems, solutions that will bring us the happiness and the freedom and the income that we really need and want. It's just a matter of seeing the opportunities that are there of really looking deeper for, for what, is, what is there to support us, what is there to guide us and help us. We are each capable of so much more than what we perceive on a day-to-day -day basis. So let go of that small version of yourself that's been saying, oh, you're not good enough to do this, or um, if it's about a relationship that's like really, really scared to be alone, or, um, the part of yourself that thinks that you need 10 more years of training before you can even think about starting a new thing. Let go of that small part of yourself and really step into the fullness of the experience that you do have, the strength and the courage that you have within you that has guided you through other difficult situations before in your life. Really connect with that. Really connect with what you are capable of and the power that is within you because we are each truly infinitely powerful open up to your full potential and know that you have these ideas and these longings and these passions for a very important reason these feelings that you have are not selfish they are not petty um, they are not for no reason they are they are for a very important reason so we need to really seek out ways to accomplish what we most deeply desire. Every single one of us holds a key to something very important that the world needs. And when we're playing small, when we're thinking I'm not good enough, or when we're thinking I'll never have enough training to do what I really want, or when we're thinking I can't leave this bad relationship because I don't want to be alone, we're holding ourselves back from our full potential. So my biggest call to action for you from this whole um, talk today is to really, really look deeply into all of all of the amazing experience you have, all of the courage and strength you have within, and really call upon that. Connect with that every day. When negative thoughts start coming up, change over to focusing on all that you all that you are and all the power you have within. That is really, really amazing. So. Each and every one of us holds this key to something that the world needs. And our deepest desires, our dreams, our wishes, our longings are pointing us, your longings are pointing you toward the way that you can make the highest possible contribution to our world. And our world really deeply needs your contribution right now. So trust those desires and longings that you have. All too often we ignore our heart's desires. We, we think they're selfish or we think they're silly and we push them down again and again. Or maybe other people in our life are telling us that, you know, that's not realistic, you shouldn't go for that. And we instead choose to do what is sensible and logical or even worse, what other people are telling us that we should be doing with our lives. So I really encourage you to connect in to the practices that I said at the beginning on discovering your purpose or going deeper into your purpose. Choose something outside of your comfort zone that you can do and really take action on it. And to live every day going forward from now by tuning into your heart, tuning into your inner longings. 
when we um, make an effort. So what I recommend is that you try to do something that you love every day, even if it's very small, even if it's just that like you never have time to sit down and read a book, just make five minutes, like section out five minutes of, of each day just to sit down and read a book that you love, right? That's a very simple example. There's many, many more examples of what that could look like, but try to do something that you love every day. Or if you can't fit it in on a daily basis, if your schedule just doesn't allow that, then plan one day every week that you will really spend a few hours focusing on something that you love. You know, we've got to, we've got to really tune into our heart. We've got to tune in to what our heart and our intuition are telling us about our higher purpose. And, and that comes through in these longings and these desires and this what we, what we wish for, what we dream about and wish that we could do. And so if you can't currently hear the voice of your intuition or if, it's, or if you're not sure, you know, if it's like, you know, I'm not sure if it's really that intuitive voice or if I'm just making it up, the best thing you can do to be able to hear that better, to hear that more strongly, is to really tune into what do I want how does this make me feel? If I think about going out, you know, uh, with, with these three friends tonight, how do I really truly feel about that? Does that lift me up and bring me joy? Or would I rather stay home tonight and just have some solitude for myself? You know, really feeling into what your heart wants. And so this is not just on a social level, of course, right? This is on a, a much larger level for your whole life. But when you Really make an effort to tune into what you want, what your heart wants for you, and spend some time every single day or every single week doing something that you love. That voice of your intuition is going to become stronger because when you tune into those feelings and those wants and needs that you have, you are tuning into your intuition. So I really encourage you to do that and just see what emerges. And so I want to offer you a suggestion today. And this is something that many of you are already taking action on and that others on the call have not really yet considered. But I just want to um, open up the new possibility for you that if you're feeling unfulfilled in your life, if you are working at a job or making your living in a way that does not bring you great joy, if you know you are meant for something bigger, than what is currently happening in your life right now. If you know that you are meant to be a driving force for the rapid evolution and awakening of consciousness that is happening on our planet at this time. If you are here to be a warrior in service to life and love, then I'm here to tell you that the best possible thing you can do is to start thinking about how you can shift away from making your income doing something you don't like and begin planning for ways to make your income doing something that you love. Now it comes back to income because so often we know what we want, we know what we would rather be doing, but we stay in the same old way because we've got to have the paycheck, we've got to have the money coming in, we've got to be able to keep a roof over our heads and pay for our children's food, right? So the income part, is so important. And there are huge opportunities right now to shift from doing work that you don't like to really being able to spend every single day doing something that you love and bring in income for yourself and your family while doing that. And I am here to take a stand for you to contribute to a new way of living working and supporting ourselves, not just for ourselves as individuals, although that is obviously a critical and key component of it, but also for our larger world. Okay, I am here to take a stand for creating a sacred economy, for creating a life economy, an economy in which we each receive the financial resources that we truly need and that we want from doing work that we love. And this is an economy where money, we need money flowing into our lives so that we can live, so that we can survive, but money is not the top priority, okay? Money is important and it is necessary to live, but the higher priorities are compassion and love and life and generosity and community. Because 
this is so important to me, as you can tell, right? Um, and I and I invite anybody who feels called to this, who this is really meaningful for, um, to to join me in creating a sacred economy, in creating a life economy. And this is because when we are each doing the work that we love, the focus of our global economy, our collective human economy, is going to shift from putting profit and money at the top to instead putting life and community, generosity, compassion, and empowerment of others as our top priorities. And so if you're listening to this call today, there's a reason for you to be hearing this message. This is going to be turning on something new in your, in your brain that's going to be running around in there. And I just want to put the idea out there to you and see if it resonates for your heart and soul that perhaps you too are meant to be a part of creating this new sacred economy, this new way of doing business in our modern world. So if you are... Yes, Charles Eisenstein, absolutely amazing book. Thanks, Elle. Um, if you are feeling the call to explore the possibility of starting your own business or your own community so that you can do what you love and earn an abundant living by doing so, then I invite you to join me for a second webinar that is coming up in this series of three webinars. And it will be broadcast live, just like this one, on September 4th, which is Tuesday, coming up. So mark your calendar now. It will be on Tuesday, September 4th at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, 3 p.m. in the UK. And it's called Your Visionary Business, Five Proven Entrepreneurial Strategies to Ensure a Strong Start and Sustainable uh, Profitability. So when we want to create this sacred economy, we do have to put into place these logical, practical secrets to success that are going to give you a business that will last, right? That will be successful, that will bring you income and will last. And once we have these steps in place, then you can take your part in creating that new sacred economy and encouraging others to do the same, okay? And so in this training, uh, that's going to happen on Tuesday, you will learn some key tips and secrets to help you understand some of the technology needs of starting a new business. And we'll also look at your money mindset. Because a lot of us have an idea that money is bad, or if I get more money, I'll be bad, right? And that's just not the case. The truth is that money is energy, and it allows, we can put that energy toward whatever we want. So if you want to be doing amazing work in the world and you start making money by doing your amazing work in the world it's just going to increase your ability to make a positive difference in the world and so your money mindset in that way is absolutely critical to your success as an entrepreneur or as a future entrepreneur so if the idea of starting your own business or your own community is fairly new to you you will definitely want to attend this training on Tuesday because there's just so much to learn on this topic. And even if you're not ready to begin your business yet or begin your community yet, you're going to be getting an amazing head start on your journey with this free information that I'm going to be sharing. And this is really information that I only share with my one-on-one -on -one clients and online course students normally. Like this is the only time in 2018 that I'm presenting this information for free. So I really encourage you to attend if you have any, any inkling that you might want to start your own business or your own community. And so during this call on September 4th, we're going to cover how to create a beautiful professional website that will connect you with the world, that will allow you to share your message. Um, how to get maximum clarity on who your ideal clients are and what their needs are so that you can really create the messaging that's going to um, resonate for them. Um, as I mentioned, how to upgrade your money mindset, absolutely essential so that you can welcome in the abundance that you really deserve. And how to create a successful business that gives you the freedom you truly need in your life so that you are free to do the things you want to do while still growing and expanding your business in beautiful ways in sacred economy ways okay so the this web the webinar that's happening on tuesday is called your visionary business and it will be at the same zoom link as you used to join here and at the same facebook page so mark your calendar now and one last note, if you are, are listening and you already have a successful business and you are ready to take 
massive action to really leap up to the next level, then email me and I will put my email in the chat here because I have something really exciting to share with you. Okay, so with that, let me put that in the chat and then we will open this up for Q&A. And I welcome you to ask any questions that you might have. You can raise your hand to ask questions or you can put your questions in the chat. And I hope you all have enjoyed what I shared here today. Okay, I'm just putting my email in the chat. I'll be back with you in just a second here. Okay. Okay, Elle, sounds like this was a synchronistic for you today, huh? That's beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, big things are happening. Things are changing quickly, so really pay attention to that. Pay attention to what your heart really wants around all of this. Okay, so let me check and see if any hands are raised. So go ahead and raise your hand if you would like to now or post a question in the chat. And I'm gonna be checking the Facebook page as well and see if there's any questions here. If you would like, if you're uh, watching live on the Facebook page and you would like to put a question in the comments there, go right ahead. See some lovely comments there. Fantastic. Okay, and if we don't have any questions, that's fine, we can end. Um, but I just wanted to give you that opportunity in case you want. Okay. Well, so, okay, we do have questions. Good. All right, Cindy. So, Cindy, I will bring you over here to ask your question. Let me see. Trying to unmute you. Okay, there we go. Hi, Cindy. Oh, hi. Hi. It's Cindy. I didn't know. Yay. I'm so glad to see you. How are you? <laughs> oh, I came in a little bit late and I had no idea I was going to be um, visual. So I'm kind of a little, little surprised looking at myself. And there's... <laughs> you look great. You really... Thanks. Um, I missed the very beginning when you were talking about practices and tools. Okay. Is yes. Starting with? yes. I will send those out. Um, yeah, I will make sure that you get that by email and everybody who's registered for the webinar series will receive the recording of this video so you can we, we can watch it again too. But I'll also put them in in the email as well those questions that I asked for journaling at the beginning. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I love the um, I love the dream that you share with sacred economy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We need yeah, it's really um, it's really becoming activated these days. So it's something, something important coming through. Yeah. Thanks, Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you, Cindy. Hope you have a wonderful day. You too, thanks. thanks. Okay, Elle, let me bring you over. You have your hand raised here. Now, if anybody wants to raise your hand and doesn't want to be visible, you can turn off your camera. That's totally fine. Of course, I would love to see your smiling faces, but you don't have to. So, hi, L. How are you? Hi there. Am I on there? You're on. I can see you. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi. Thank you. Why, um, you know, I, I said that I'm scared because I'm going to talk to a banker today. And I, I am struggling with um, paying attention to that intuit, intuitive side and, you know, being... Um, faithful to stepping out with just enough information but I don't feel comfortable when it comes to being in the masculine what I call the masculine world and that's why stepping into that banker arena all of a sudden I feel that intuitive side sort of shut down or scurry off to the to the you know wings instead of allowing that part to be fully present also even in that masculine realm mm -hmm. do you follow i think so so um are you are you pursuing a job 
there in that in banking and uh, that whole world or are you are you going there for a, just a business transaction oh no, i'm per yeah for a business transaction to buy a retreat center which is my dream that i am pursuing oh wonderful yeah congratulations yeah. on yeah. and it's like getting this thank you That's it's a very woo. But like I said, I, I don't have every duck in a row because I don't even know what the ducks are. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm, I'm moving forward in, uh, in my intuition and faith and following my heart. Yeah. But, you know, that's not exactly the terms that you use to speak to a banker. <laughs> so. Right. I understand. I see what you're I don't know. Saying. Yes. So you are, so you are following your intuition. It sounds to me like you're very in touch with your intuition, which I think you said at the beginning, sometimes you struggle with that, but it sounds to me like you're, you're doing pretty well with that. Um, and so, yes. And so you have received the vision and you are, you know what you need to do. Yes. But now you need to go into this like masculine world of the, the banking and the whole money system and everything in order to like, make it happen. Okay. Gotcha. So, yes. So a couple yes. very important yeah. things here. One is before you go in there, connect in with your guides or with God, goddess of, you know, higher power that you connect in with and ask for their help. Ask for them to make this whole process, the financial process, very smooth and easy, okay? And just tell them that you're very open to however it's meant to work out, but you're asking for their help mm -hmm. to inspire the person on the other side of the desk at the bank to look favorably upon you and to really see your vision with you, right? And to really understand. Um, okay, that, that's how to... Uh, keep that presence with you whenever you're in the situation yes. kind of prepare beforehand yeah get the guides that makes perfect sense yes jocelyn um i i'm going to do this today at 5 30 so i have a little bit of time and i i'll have time to prepare like that good good yeah and just trust you know yeah. trust that you are you are following your guidance you are following your vision and so this is going to work out in the best possible way, you know, for your higher purpose. So just really, really trust in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I hope it all goes beautifully. That is, that is so fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. And keep in mind too, okay. many people who are, you know, the person that may be on the other side of the desk at the bank, there making the decision. They have dreams too. You know, they have, they have other bigger ideas of what they probably want to be doing so they'll you know they'll mm -hmm. understand they might they'll probably understand even more than you might think going in mm -hmm. mm, that's a really good yes. way to see that yes yeah so i hope that's helpful and good very luck. good good luck today mm -hmm. I hope it all very helpful beautiful. thank you yeah thank you thank you all right i'll talk to you later bye yeah, okay bye Wow. Congratulations, Al. That is really, really exciting that you're doing that today. I love it. Okay, Inga, I'm going to bring you over. I hope I'm saying your name right. Okay, let's see. Hi, Inga. Am I saying your name the right way? Hi. Hi. Am I saying your name right if I say Inga? Inga. Okay, good. Wonderful. Inga. Welcome. How are you? Yep. I am very well, thank you. That was a very inspirational webinar. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, you were talking about, you know, moving from the, like the intuitive part, like the feminine part into like the action, the very masculine part. Yes. And I can do both, you know, I can be very, very intuitive mm -hmm. and very action oriented mm -hmm. but the thing is i'm always either or and i have a very hard time you know not not so much switching between the two but it's like okay i'm being very intuitive right now and i you know i get all the information and all the guides are talking to me and then i take action and it just seems that 
you know, all the intuitive powers, no, they're not switched off, but I'm so focused on the action yeah. that I need to take that I kind of lose. Uh, yeah. yeah like, so I guess I'm asking if you have any tips to, for me to bring it more into balance. Okay. Yeah. Finding, finding that balance. I hear you. I am very much the same way that I'm really, I can be really strong in both, but it is, I, I agree. It's very hard to switch. It's very hard mm -hmm. to switch from one to the other. And when I'm in a really um, like that, you know, this week, for example, I'm creating, I'm doing this webinar, I'm doing another webinar tomorrow. Like I'm really in this action, very, very computer oriented mode, you know, and it, it is very hard to also then do my meditation in the morning. Like somehow it's not the mode that I'm in. So I really, really hear you on that. Um, so one thing that I think I, that I think is very important to focus on is to find the balance in your overall picture. Okay. So if like, if this week you have to be in this very, very masculine mode and like you can even plan this on your calendar. I don't know what your work is that you do exactly, but if you can plan this on your calendar that if you know you have a really, really busy week, then try to really make some time either on the weekend or on the week following that to be in the more intuitive, meditative, visionary space, the more feminine place to, to balance it out without having to like switch back and forth between them during the day. Cause I, I find that really hard and I find that it's not effective to switch back and forth. Like yeah. if I'm in the mode of one, I kind of have to stay there for a while. <laughs> you know, if I'm in that receiving insights mode, I'm not in the place to be doing webinars, you know, for a few days yeah. after that. It, do you, do you agree with that? Um, yeah, it, it's like, you know, when I get into a certain mode, I don't want to get out of it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I like it, yeah. you know, and then, but I do feel like I don't want to lose the connection with the other side. Yes. Because together they're so powerful. They really are. Yes. And if you can, you know, um, if you can keep up, like if you have a daily practice, whether it's a morning practice or an evening practice, but if you have a daily practice, whether it's meditation or drumming or, you know, whatever it might be, if you can try to do that on a daily basis and really stay connected into that side, even if it's just for 10 or 15 minutes each day, um, that is definitely going to help you in, in doing the masculine stuff all day long, you know, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's definitely going to like power up and supercharge all the actions that you need to take and really help you be clear on, on how to do things in the best way. Um, so if you can work that in on a daily basis and like, it, you know, when you first wake up is a very good time because you're just coming out of the dream space. If you can take 15 minutes yeah. and do that meditation, then the whole rest of the day, you know, you've already gotten that. You've already made that connection. You've gotten that part in and you can kind of focus on the, the doing. Yeah, I do that already. Yeah, it's that's good. That's good. Already. It's such a huge, um, it's very unusual to have both really strongly. So that's a huge <laughs> plus for you. You know, that's a huge benefit. It is, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's hard to balance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that would be my advice. That's kind of what I do. I kind of, I okay. try to block off segments of time. Like this week, I know it's going to be really, really active and just go, 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 do, do, do. And then the following week, I try to schedule to be a, a lot more meditative time. And that's what, that's what I've found to be right for me. But you really want to feel into what is, is that right for you or how, you know, how can I you. I think scheduling um, it in is mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, a yeah, key. Scheduling it in. Or, will be a key for me. Like, yeah. I know that. You know, if I have it planned, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it's on the calendar, right? <laughs> it's in my calendar, so I will do it. <laughs> right, and very important, like, if you scheduled, okay, for these three days, I'm going to be really in that, you know, intuitive, meditative space. Don't let anybody else get in on those calendar days, right? We have to really guard against that because it's very easy for that, for, yeah. the, for the world to creep in on it. Um, yeah. So really hold that as sacred and, and keep that space for yourself to connect in. All right. All right. Hopefully Thank you. For you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. It was really, really good. So hope you have a beautiful day. I will. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Let me see. Let me just check in the chat here and 
Zoom and on Facebook and see what other questions have come up in the chat. Um, so we do have one question here. What if you don't know what action to take? So I really recommend going deeply into those questions. I didn't want to have, I didn't want to make the webinar extra long by giving you time to do that whole process here on the webinar. So that's why I just gave you the questions to work on on your own, but really spend some time, you know, if even if you can set aside a full hour um, to really go deeply into those questions and leave like two full pages in your journal or notebook for each question, um, you know, to write out the answers go deeply into that, like really make it a deep meditation before you go into the questions and really just allow it to be a stream of consciousness that comes from this, you know, deeper place than our, our normal logical uh, waking consciousness. Let it all come from that deeper place as you write out the answers and then come back to it a day or two later and just see what you find. I bet you will find some really, some surprising things, some things you didn't expect and some really, um, beautiful information that's going to help to guide you to figure out what action to take. And it is, you know, I, I, the step one is to do the work to understand your true life's purpose. It is work, okay? It's also play. It's like work and play at the same time, but it's not easy. You know, we really need to set aside time for this. If we're looking for the answers in our life, if we're looking for the answers to what is our purpose, we need to really spend the time with it, you know, and to really um, get into that, that deeper meditative state and to really go deep with answering those, those sorts of questions. And then you will receive, okay? If you set your intention to really receive what you need, then, then you will, um, as long as you're willing to go deep and spend some good time with that. So good luck. Good luck to you. Um, let's see. So Mark, let me read your question here. As an a-spiritual nature artist and filmmaker, I'm currently working at the edge of technology to cinematically film and edit my work. I struggle with technology and how it costs so much. I feel too small to cover these costs, but I need to silent. I need the silent space of my own work. So, okay, so the tech side, I don't know a lot about the technology of film. Um, I hear you that it costs a lot. You know, that's how a lot of our technology is. Um, I think, so here's my intuitive sense for you, Mark. I think that you are playing small. I think that you wrote that in the chat for a reason because that is in your awareness that you are capable of so much more now i hear you on needing the silent space of your own to work but what i would encourage you to do is to just as we talked about with inga to find a way to create your work and share it on a wider scale but then also schedule in the time for the silent space right for the solitude that you really need to fulfill your own you know your own sacred space needs um and to find a balance between the two okay but i do i just i have a sense i have an intuitive sense that you are really capable of doing a lot that you are capable of bringing in a lot more income from your work that what than what you currently are and that there is a way for you to find a balance between getting your work out there, but also having the sacred space for yourself that you need to be creative and to get the insights and to do all the things that you really need and just for, for your own um, peace and calm as well. I feel that there's a way for you to find a balance, but also share your work on a wider scale. So I hope that's helpful. Um, it's a little tough to answer the question without having a more in-depth conversation with you but um, maybe we'll talk at some point in the future and we can go into that. But that's, that's my intuitive sense for you. So take that to heart and, and I hope that you'll find that helpful. Okay, well with that, we are gonna go ahead and close. Let me just check. Um, let's see. So let me, I'm going on the Facebook now. So Olga is saying, how about action blocks? I have a misbalanced money story and not a lot of clarity, but I find myself lacking the courage to dip into actual action mode for years. 
Okay, so Olga, what I would recommend, because it feels like there's some kind of block there, but you don't really know exactly what it is, and you're not sure exactly why you can't get fully into action mode. Um, so the word that you used there was block, and I agree, right? There, there's a block there. There's something either from your past or a belief system that you may have picked up um, as a child even, or, or based on events in your life that is blocking you and there's a way to work with these blocks and these and these fears and doubts that come up um, and so i have a whole process for that that i have just recently shared in my online course that is called learning to fly and so i offered this course for free a few weeks ago and if you would be interested olga you are welcome to join and if you listen to module one and module two actually that we've recorded already, I think you will find some really beautiful answers in there. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to post the URL for the Learning to Fly course here. And if you will come back to the course a little bit later today, I just need to switch it over because right now it's listed for $59, but for those listening here right now, because this is so relevant to what we're talking about, I wanna make it free. So anyone who's interested in this Learning to Fly course, you can go to this page to learn more about it. And Olga, I just think module one especially is gonna be very, very meaningful and helpful to you. So let me go in and make the changes to make that free again. Um, check back maybe in about an hour at about 12 noon Eastern and that'll be free again and anybody who's watching is also welcome to come and sign up for free and Learn about how to remove blocks and fears and doubts uh, Even ones that are below the surface and you don't really know exactly what they are There's a way that I have to share to work with them. So um, Let me put that in the chat here too. Okay, so that is now in the Zoom chat as well. So if anybody would want to attend that, just check back on that page, copy and paste that page somewhere now so you'll have it, and then check back in that page around 12 noon Eastern and it'll, it'll be set up for free and you can come and join. I'd love to have you all join me there. We have our module three webinar for learning to fly tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, so I hope you can join me for that. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna close. But before we close, I just wanna remind you to attend the second video training in this series. So that will be on Tuesday, September 4th at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. UK. Um, and if you are already registered, let me put in the registration page again. If you're already registered, you will all, for the three video series, you will automatically get that email with all the joining information. If you have not yet registered, you can go to this link right here. I'm gonna put this in the Facebook chat too. You can go to that link right there and register just to make sure that you're receiving the notifications for the three video series. Um, and the next two will be, as I said, on Tuesday, September 4th, and then the, the, la the third will be on Saturday, September 8th. So go ahead and sign up if you would like to attend and receive notifications for that. Okay, I hope you all have a beautiful day. It's been wonderful connecting with you. Thank you for those who were courageous to raise your hand and to uh, ask me the questions. I love engaging with you all in that way. So have a beautiful day. Lots of love.